Glader Buzz here and still standing after Hurricane Isabel came through North Carolina. Terrible devastation, trees knocked over on houses, and we're making stuff out of the wood that's uh, been knocked down, but also some of the wood that's left scrap from repair. And I've got two things we're going to make from uh, scrap lumber from folks having to rebuilding and say, oh, look, here's the remains of our old house. And we made it into things like this, a little rocking chair and a little stool. So we're going to make these little guys here. This little rocking chair is a wonderful little thing for a kid or for a doll there. And it's made to sit in front of the fire. It has these big wings here to keep the draft because, of course, the draft from the fire is you're burning your oak from the trees knocked down. Uh, that'll keep the draft away from you. And also has on the back is odd this little uh, extension that you reach with your foot. And I was thinking, gosh, that's to help uh, the folks rock the kid in front of the fire. But of course, without that extension on there, this thing would just keep on going, falling over. Now, this is all nailed together, just nailed together pieces, cut them out, nail them, nothing to it. This now has no nails in it. This is a little bench we're going to see how to make held together with sliding dovetails and a wonderful little uh, kind of half lap joint. Let's see how to do this again with no nails. We're going to start with our little uh, rocking chair here. So rocking chair. This extension, I'm going to just take this, oh, I'm going to take the side off. There you go. You can see it's just nailed together and how easily that comes apart. All right. This little extension is a separate piece that goes on with little half lap joints there. I'll just put that aside. But I've left this one piece loose, just held together with finish nails, because this is really the problem you have. It is curves and it is bevels. If you see, this comes in at an angle to the back, so we have to bevel the back to fit flush here, the side rather, to fit against the back. And we have to cut out the curves. So we're going to do that with the jigsaw and the plane. There we are. So the jigsaw and the plane. I've got a treadle jigsaw here ready to go and a piece all lined out. So go ahead and cut this one and let's see if I can get the treadle up to speed here. So this is just some scrap wood, some three quarter pine used for sheeting. Yeah. You see how clear the wood is. the curves here with the jigsaw. All right. So very simple uh, stuff now. This can, can of course, be uh, beveled down the rest of the way. It's wonderful, this old wood from these older houses. This is when, boy, when trees were trees, it had really uh, tight growth rings and very, very clear grain. So now it's sawn it out, and of course you can clean it down, smooth those saw cuts down with the spoke shave, uh, turning when the grain turns. I get to the bottom here and of course have to turn the spoke shape around to always be going with the grain. Get around that curve and smooth. So this is great stuff here. Smooth it down and then put on the bevel down the sides there so you can get nice and smooth rounded edges there. So the spoke shape is real handy to have. Now I uh, did most of this with the uh, bow saw, but uh, with the, I'm sorry, with the treadle uh, jigsaw there, but lines like this you can do just with a uh, chisel. You very quickly bring down uh, this, something like this if the grain is straight for you. Yeah. Let's bring it down close to the line, and that's even faster than sawing. Gosh, it's a wonderful soft mellow wood. Pretty cool to work with this stuff. You get a sense of what the old carpenters were working with this wonderful, wonderful wood. All right. So there we go. Get that beveled all around. All right, I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> I can get uh, caught up just in spoke shaving because it's so much fun to work with this wonderful clear wood. But now we have to do the bevel. And that bevel, of course, it joins the back. And so here's the second tool you need is, of course, the adjustable bevel, this little tool right here. We can use that to set the angle on the back, which is really uh, the equivalent of this angle right here. You look, here's the seat. We cut the trapezoidal seat out and adjust the bevel to match that angle right there because this is the intersection we have to have that butt joint. So set that bevel to it and then transfer that bevel. 
You can do it this way. Let's see. I've got the right angle. Yes. All right. Is that right? I want to take off this side. Let's see. Which side do I want to take off? I want it to bevel out like that, so I want to take off this side. There we go. All right, so look at the gap right there. Look at that gap between there and there, and you can put a little guideline on there. See, there's a gap right in there. So take that and kind of guesstimate what it is with my pencil. Setting the pencil, hold your finger there, and then run your pencil along like that. That'll give you a guideline to do. Yeah, all right. I get back up here. Yeah. All right. And then take this down again if it's straight grained with a draw knife or with your chisel. Or you can do it all with the plane. But one of the things with working with these tools, there's one for each speed of the job. There you go. A little dive in the grain there. And on up and whoop. all right. And now with the plane, take the plane and bring that bevel down until we're at that rough guide of the pencil line. Then we'll use the bevel just to test it and make sure it's right. So like that's all the tools you need to do that. Just cutting out, there you go. And then check that bevel on there and that's perfect. Look at that. Yeah, right on down there like that. So check it with the bevel to make sure it's gonna match that splay out angle. Now, then all of this goes nailed glued together. A uh, very simple, oh, 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 very simple thing to put together. And I've just used two little light finish nails on here. Of course, when this was made, it would have been done with cut nails, which have a pretty good grip on it. The original I saw this was painted brown, and it did have these little heart cutouts on it. And I want to warn you now, since that goes in there, all right, in the seat, and these are just nailed on here again, that little tail bracket. You can see how it fits on there. I want to warn you, because there is a uh, trap here. Uh, you can get very successful making stuff like this, particularly uh, check yourself if you're making things that have hearts in it. If you have a, a lot of things that you're doing real well with that have heart cuts, cutouts in it, you may be headed down that pit, you're, you're in the shtick. Because folks, there, there are people out there who will buy anything that has a heart cut out in it. And if you're turning out heart cut out stuff, well, make sure you haven't just stopped a little bit too soon on the journey of craftsmanship that you're headed on. All right, let's move on now. We're gonna work on our little bench. I wanna show you, in fact, here's one that's been used on the back porch for a while just to hold uh, potted plants. Done the same way with sliding dovetail joints. Let me see, I think this one slides off this way. All right, you can see the sliding dovetails there. See, the top has a uh, dovetail groove cut in it right there. Right there, a little dovetail groove, and these uh, little legs have a dovetail cut in the top to match there. There you go. And you can see it all comes apart. This is just half lapped in there. See how this is a little kind of a bridle joint? Now the problem with this joint is this can snap right there. See how there's nothing supporting that? That could just snap right off and you have an open joint. And it doesn't have a lot of torque uh, twisting because of uh, resistance. Uh, it's not a really great joint. And this, neither is this kind of dovetail that's equal all the way down. Although it works, let me put it back together again on this end here. Although it works, uh, it, you have to have it precise all the way across. In other words, there's no, it doesn't get tighter as it goes together. It has to be precise all the way across. So that kind of precision is very difficult to do. So what you want is, of course, a sliding dovetail that is tapered. And although it seems more difficult to cut, it is actually not. You see again how that goes together there. There's that dovetail. You see how that dovetail slides in over the bracket there. And that supports it. Yeah. And so this will come apart, but it never gets tight. This can just keep on going. So that's a problem. That's why I'm going to look at this next one has a better design. That's why this one was relegated to the uh, <laughs> porch with potted plants on it. This one has tapered dovetails in it. You can see they're quite big on this side. On the back side, however, I spin it around, you can see they're a bit smaller. See how they're smaller on this side? All right, so I can take it and knock it. And am I knocking in the right direction? Because you can see, oh no, you can't knock that way. You have to knock this way. All right, but let me turn it around here. 
It's tough. You sit there knocking, say, what's going on? What's going on? Well, you're knocking it tighter. You're trying to go into infinite tightness. All right, now it's loose. But it was very, very tight before because these are tapered here. You see how they slide off again. Tapered dovetails, narrow at this end, narrow at this end, wide at the far end. So much stronger, tighter when it wedges together. And notice how these joints, instead of being simple, have compound bevels on them so that they lock against each other. This face is beveled here, beveled there, so that the bottom is supported against rocking by the kind of corresponding socket on this face. You see, this piece can't rock over. So again, a little more complicated joint. That's what we're going to start cutting. And cut these bottom joints here first and then set that top on there. Well, let's see. This is, this is it looks tougher than it is. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It is. We're going to go ahead and work on this joint now. Thinking about it as if it were a regular halved joint. But then you'll see the modification. So look here. Here's, here are the two pieces that have to go together. And I'm going to cut out on the bracket. I'll cut out. Now, if I was doing just the square lap, I'd just do this part right here, wouldn't I? Just this part. Cut that out. All of this would come out. But instead, we've come in 3 eighths of an inch, and we're going to cut on this line cut on this line and then bevel down. We'll do a little bevel socket here, but this part we will cut out. Now, on the foot, this is the, the foot that comes down. We've done the same thing, but here we had to start uh, below the point of the dovetail. So there again, this is the width of that piece right there. The dovetail that's going to go in, we have three quarter inches down. This piece right here, normally we would cut out all of this, but we're not. We're going to come in 3 eighths of an inch, 3 eighths of an inch here, draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, draw a line. We're going to cut on that line after we have done the sliding dovetail. All right, now we got to look at the sliding dovetail. And it's complicated. You have to lay all this stuff out first. The sliding dovetail uh, comes down right here, 3 quarters of an inch on the narrow end and 3 eighths of an inch at the top of the narrow end. This is 3 quarters. So here we have 3 quarters from there to there, 3 quarters from there to there. 3 eighths from there to there connected diagonally. Now on the other end though, it is just 3 eighths of an inch down and right to the edge right there. So just 3 eighths of an inch down and right to the edge. Right? I've already scribed a line across that is above where that bracket's going to go. We're going to start cutting now. Right. And maybe this will be clear. We're going to work on this a while. I'll give you a long enough chance to look at it and uh, see what it's all about. Let me get this guy cranked out here. And we'll go ahead and saw across the grain. So we're going to do this with a crosscut saw and a rip saw. We'll use the crosscut saw right here, setting it in the groove. Why don't I put my hold fast in this other dog hole? And that will hold it well. There we go. Now we got four dogs grabbing it. Arr, that ought to do it. Now, cross grain cut. I'm going to cut down to that line. All right, I'm already down to three eighths. Yeah. All right, doesn't take long. With a good cross cut saw. And then you can kind of slide the saw to make sure it's dead even in there. All right. Now, that's our, our uh, cross cut. Now we've got to do the rip on this top line, down the end grain. So you rip down end grain with a different saw, a chisel tooth saw. This has big old teeth on it, and we've got to be real precise with this. But that's why you want to use these tools. You can get used to it now. Our first cut. Now, this whole thing is going to be done at an angle with the saw flipped over. But we can start with the saw vertical just to make the groove. Let's hold my thumb back here. You want to cut on the waist side of the line and get that, those sharp little chisel teeth. Now, the sharper it is, the more it's going to bite in for you and stay on that line. Cut more accurately. Won't wander around. And now we start laying it over. I'm going to saw this diagonal here. A little bit of wood, but cut across a great width of wood. 
I love it. Ripsaw, ripsaw. good on that line. Again, on the outside of the line, you want to cut on the waist side. Cutting down until that piece comes out. Keep checking. Ah, okay. There you go. So that's out there. There's our waist piece uh, just popped on out, out of there. Yeah. All right, now the rest of this can be refined with, let me tilt that over there so you see it a little bit better there. We can go down with a chisel, take a chisel and go down there and refine that if you need to, but gosh, that's cut so perfectly. We're going to go on with the second part of the joint, which is cutting the halving where uh, the, the blue brace is going to go on. So now this, you can see why we had to cut this joint first, because it would be tough if we had that gap in there. So now we're back to a rip saw cut down again, down the grain. I'm going to cut on these two lines here. I'm cut right there. Use like a giant uh, coping saw, this little bow saw, and drop the teeth down in there and cut that turn across the grain. All right. All right. Yeah, now, the rest of this we can do with, well, let's take that down with a chisel. So, lots of this, you can see how this one gives you a lot more chance to use all your tools and that one that you had where you're nailing stuff together. You see how nails are real labor savers there, fasteners, but here we're working with joints. So we've got this, now we've got to do, uh, well, why don't I do it from here? I'm going to do it right from here. I'm going to cut this in. I'm going to draw a line. We'll do this, of course, on both sides. Well, I'm just going to do this one side. We want to just cut these little shoulders that that are going to hold this lower part from uh, of the intersecting piece from going around, from moving around. So I cut down the grain right here on that line and right there. And this is kind of a stopping cut. This will just keep the splits from running where you don't want them to. All right, yeah, that worked. All right, but now I am going to have to turn it over because I want to chisel down. So lay this down flat on the bench top and work it along the grain. This is uh, interesting. So when you do the other piece, of course, you're cutting across the grain a whole lot. So right here now, we've got this piece trimmed on the sides, and now it's just the chisel coming down. So we've come in three-eighths of an inch and in three-eighths of an inch in this size. Of course, you can do whatever appropriate to your timbers, but this makes a stronger half lap joint and just making them simply square. All right, that's the first part now. Now we just bevel this off very carefully, beveling that off. And that's all we're going to do with this one. I'm going to show you how it goes together. Yeah. Okay. All right, so nice bevels down the side. Let me get this piece here. We'll take a look at how that joint looks when it's all finished. Oh, here we go. Here is a piece uh, in a similar fashion, but it's done on both sides. And I take the corresponding piece with its bevels. And again, you see how they go together and slip down. And that little housing right there holds this piece from knocking side to side. This comes below the dovetail that we've cut 
and now that's ready to go into the socket that we have to cut across the grain in the bench top. We're getting close, aren't we? All right, so let's go ahead and do that socket now. That one's all ready. We've got, here it is, a piece ready to go. And just, this is an example of the kind of quality of wood some of these old houses have in them. Gosh, just magnificent. Look at this wonderful southern yellow pine. Very tough to get this nowadays. This is very uh, just even grained, tight rings. And tight rings, of course, makes for very strong pine. It makes for soft oak, but very strong pine here. work backwards a little bit on this thing. I should have a one inch chisel. Must have slipped underneath here. That's all right. We'll do it with this guy. I'm going to start just kind of zipping out the wood. Now you can do it like this, but if you do, you always have a chance of breaking out this area right here. See, we're working from the narrow end down. So I would do is come right all the way down here and get real close to your end. Get real close right there and go ahead and break that piece out. So now you won't have an accident that goes beneath that. Now you can be free to really just zip that wood right out. Let's see if we can get it down there. Yeah. You can do this with some panache here if you like. You guys like to break in from the sides. like this method here. We kind of plane your way down. Plane your way down because that's the next thing we're going to do is use a plane called the router plane. Ah, there we go. All right. Now you see as you get this down you can go smoother, lay your chisel flatter, and then transfer your work to a tool that takes all the guesswork out of it. It's this tool right here, the router plane. You see how this has an adjustable blade that drops below. Okay. And you can work that right on down to the end. Now this will cut precisely and give you a perfectly smooth bottom to that joint all the way across there. That's working with the router plane. Again, cutting this tapered do dovetail socket. Let's see what that looks like here on this piece. Yeah, there it is. All right, so that is the completed dovetail socket. Now, all through this, make sure that you are dead flat on this face here. Flat straight across here, because if this is crowned, this is also going to crown. It's got to slide all the way across and be even. To some extent, this will straighten it out. Well, let's go ahead and put the joints together here. Uh, I'm going to put it together from this side here. So you can see it uh, as it goes in. So it's just complicated, but once you get it, it's kind of a really cool thing. Four pieces of wood. Here's the dovetails going in. And they slide in, and they get tighter and tighter and tighter. And you just keep adjusting and trimming until you get it to where they are going to fit tight just at that last little bit right there. And you have got a bench that is put together with no nails or glue or fasteners of any sort. It kind of looks like a Stonehenge from uh, where the demons dwell. There you go, 18 inches high. So great little stool. And our little nailed together rocking chair. So stuff you can do with the scrap wood uh, when disaster hits. <laughs> Small consolation. Well, thanks for joining me. This has been Roy Underhill here in the Woodwright Shop. We'll see you next time. So long. Learn more about the Woodwright Shop and traditional woodworking at PBS Online. You can find us at pbs.org.